In this Blender tutorial, we're going to be creating this procedural rusty copper material. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this channel and also get the tutorial files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and also my patrons on my Patreon page will be getting the project files. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know about my procedural material packs. So if you're into procedural nodes or if you like using procedural shading for your artwork, then these procedural packs would be great for you. And by purchasing the procedural material packs, this is also a great way to help support me and this channel. And also, if you'd like to create these procedural materials yourself, then I have tutorials on my YouTube channel on how to create all of the different procedural materials. I'll have a link in the description to the playlist if you'd like to learn how to create them yourself. All right, now before we start creating this procedural rusty copper material, I wanted to show you the setup that I have. So what I did is I pressed shift A and then I added an icosphere. And then right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up so that it's very smooth. And then also I thought it would look nice to add on a Suzanne monkey head. So I pressed shift A and I went over here to mesh and added a Suzanne monkey head. And then I added a subdivision surface modifier and shaded it smooth. And then also to get some nice lighting, I added in this plain light and I I added an emission material to it so that it's shining a very nice bright light at the objects. And then also to help get some even more realistic lighting, right over here on the world I added in this HDRI and this is from polyhaven.com. So I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So I just downloaded the 1K version and then to add it in, I just clicked right here on this color on the world settings and I changed it to environment texture and then I clicked on open and opened up the HDRI. And then also this HDRI is a little bit dark so I did turn the strength up to three so it's a little bit brighter so let's get started now so I'm going to click on new right here and then you can just name this whatever you want I'm gonna name it copper I'm gonna be using the node wrangler add-on so if you don't have that add-on enabled you can just click right over here on edit and then open up the preferences and then right over here on the add-ons you can just go to the search and you can start to type in node and then you can just turn on the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video Let's just close the user preferences. All right, so let's now press Shift A, and I'm gonna start by adding a noise texture because I wanna add a nice texture for our copper. Now I'm also gonna press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a texture coordinate. I'm just gonna drop the texture coordinate node right down here, and then I want to plug the object up to the vector, and that way the noise texture will be placed around the objects more evenly. And then I can also hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the noise texture, and that is going to preview it, and that is using the feature from the node wrangler so you can hold down the control and shift key and click on nodes to preview them now also i need to click right up here and drag and drop this material onto the circle as well so on the noise texture i'm going to turn the detail all the way up to 16 so it's very detailed and now i can plug the factor into the base color and then i can control shift and click on the principal bsdf to preview it. Now that doesn't really look like a copper material, so I wanna add a color ramp in here to make the different colors for the copper. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a color ramp node, and let's just drop it right down here in between the noise texture and the principled. I'm now going to click on the white tab, and I'm going to make this white tab kind of a brownish color, but a little bit on the red side. And I do want it to be a little bit brighter, so something like that. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of 8E6F50. So that is the color that I'm gonna be using. And also I'm gonna click on the plus here to add a new color and I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. And this one I will make much more red and a bit darker. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can go over to the hex and you can type in 6B3E2E. So that's the color that I'm going to be using. And you can see now that definitely looks a lot more like copper. Now, because this is old rusty copper, I do want to add some green bits into the copper. And yes, copper actually does turn green. When copper is oxidized, when it's exposed to the oxygen, after a long time, it can kind of start to rust and it can kind of start to turn that green color. You can look it up online if you'd like to learn more about how that happens. But basically, copper does slowly start to turn green when it's oxidized and when it starts to rust. So what I want to do is I want to create a map mask and then I want to use that mask to add some green bits onto our copper. So to do this I'm going to click on this noise texture and I'm going to press shift D 
and just drop it right up here. Then I can plug the object up to the vector. So on the scale here, I'm gonna turn the scale to like a seven, and then I wanna turn the roughness here to a 0.7. And then you can control shift and click on it if you wanna preview it. So you can see it has a lot of nice detail in there. Now I want to use this to make a mask, so I wanna make it a lot more contrasty. To do this, I'm gonna press shift A, and I'm gonna search for another color ramp node, and then I'll just drop the color ramp node right in here after the noise texture. So now I can start to drag these together and it's gonna be more and more contrasty. Now I actually wanna flip these because I want it to be inverted and then I'll just make that pretty contrasty something like that so now I want to mix these both together and then we can add the green rusty part of the copper so I'll press shift a and to mix these together I'm gonna to add a mix RGB and I'll just drop it right down here let me just move this out of the way and then I can control shift and click on the mix to preview it so because this is the mask I'm gonna plug this color into the factor. And now you can see that it's adding the white parts of the color ramp into the mix and it's adding it on top of the main copper. So now color two, I can make that a green copper color. And you can see that now it's being added on top of this color. But after looking at reference images, I have found that it's not a very bright green. It usually is a little bit more blue and a little bit more shallow and kind of dark. So I'm gonna make it a color like this. It's almost kind of like a grayish bluish color. And if you'd like to use the same exact value that I'm using, you can click over here on the hex and you can type in 4B 5A 53. So that's the color that I found to work best. So I can now control shift and click on this and you can see that does look like little bits of rust on the copper. Now also because this is a copper material, it's metal. So I want to turn this metallic all the way up to one. So it acts like a metallic material. Now I also want to add a texture in here to change the roughness because I don't just want to have one roughness value. I want a texture to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this color ramp and I'll take the color and plug that into the roughness. So what this is going to do is going to make the copper more shiny but then where the rust is it's going to be more rough and that makes sense because rust usually is pretty rough but then metal usually is a bit more shiny now that is way too strong right now so I want to control how rough I want it to be so to control that I'm gonna press shift a and I'm going to search for another color ramp node and let's just drop the color ramp node right in there so now I can change both of these colors so the white tab I'm gonna make this a bit darker because I do want the rust to be a bit more shiny and then this black tab I'm gonna make it a a bit more gray because I do want the copper material to be a bit more rough. So just something like this, you can see that they're actually uh, not that different. This one's just a little bit lighter and then this one is just a little bit darker. But if you look closely here, you can see that the rust is a lot more rough than the copper. All right, now this isn't very bumpy right now and I do wanna make it bumpy, especially because it's old rusty copper. So to make it more bumpy, I'm going to take this noise texture right here. I'm gonna take the factor and I'm going to plug that into the normal. Now we need to convert this to normal data. So I'm gonna press shift A and to convert it, I'm going to add a bump node We'll just click right here and then drag it down. So this noise texture, the factor needs to be going into the height and then that'll convert it to normal data. Now it is really bumpy right now and that's way too strong. So I'm gonna change the strength to a value of 0 0.08. So it's much more subtle. If you zoom in there, you can see there's still some bump, but it is much more smooth. Now I also want to add some bump to the rust because the rust is gonna be a little bit different of a bump. So this color ramp right up here, this is the mask for where the rust is. So I want to select this bump node and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and I'll drop it right down here. So now the normal is going through the normal. So then I wanna take the color here of this color ramp and plug that into the factor. And now you can see that where there's that rust, it's popping out. And also if you want to, you could turn on the invert and then that way you can see that where the rust is, that's gonna be going back back in. All right, so that is looking pretty cool, but I do just wanna add one more layer of bump to make it very detailed. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. I'm just gonna drop the Voronoi right down here. And then what I wanna do is I want to use a noise texture to distort the vector. So this noise texture, I'm gonna press Shift D, and I'm gonna duplicate it and just drop it right down here. So now we can plug the object up to the vector right here. And then I wanna take the color of this noise texture and plug that into the vector of the Voronoi texture. And then I can control shift and click on it to preview it. So you can see this noise texture is distorting the Voronoi. 
Now the Voronoi here, I want to change the F1 to distance to edge. And you can see now we have that really cool detail in there. And then this roughness here on the noise texture, I want to change that to a 0.6 so that there's even more detail. So to add this to the bump, I'm going to take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'll drop it right down here. So I can now take this normal and plug it into the normal of this bump. So that way we can add multiple bump maps together. And then we need to convert this to normal data. So I'll plug the distance up to the height of this bump. So I can now control shift and click on the principled BSDF to preview the final material. The only thing I'm not sure about is if I prefer the rust to be inverted or not, because if it's not inverted, you can see that it looks like the rust is popping out a little bit. And I do like that look, but then also if I turn on the inverted, it looks like the rust is going in slightly. So this is really just personal preference. You can change it to whatever you want. All right, and there we go. So that is the procedural rusty copper material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching it. And also if you'd like to help support this channel and also get the tutorial files, then you can get that on my Gumroad and Patreon. I'll have links in the video description. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful and I hope to see you in a future video.